Section 3.6 is on negations of conditional statements and De Morgan's Law. Let's start with what happens when you negate a conditional statement. So negation, that was that squiggle, that tilde symbol. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to put a conditional. That's the if-then arrow. And let's just pretend we have P in the if portion and Q in the then portion. So I'm going to negate. Take the opposite meaning of, in other words, if P then Q. When I do that, it's equivalent to, so I use three bars for the phrase is equivalent to. Kind of looks like an equal symbol, but with one more horizontal line. In other words, this results in, look at the pattern. I keep whatever's in the if portion exactly the same. So here I have just plain old P. When I take the opposite of a conditional, it becomes an and, so that's the up arrow, and I negate whatever's in the then portion. So keep the if portion P the same, it becomes an up arrow and when you negate the conditional and Q changes to not Q. So P and not Q would be the negation of if P then Q. Looking at an example of this, it says to write the negation, so take the opposite of, quote, if you do not have a fever, you do not have the flu. So if P represents that you do have a fever, because we temporarily ignore the word not, to sign letters first, let P represent you do have a fever we write the word do a little bit better for my messy handwriting. Second part, we again temporarily ignore the word not, so I'm going to let Q represent that you do have the flu. So there's step one, assign letters to represent each of the ideas. It does not literally say the word then, it only has the word if, by the way. The then is implied, so this actually is a conditional statement in disguise. So now step two, bring in the symbols and the letters, reread the sentence again. So the word if really means if then. In the if portion, you do not have a fever, so you need to negate fever, negate P. So if not P. In the then portion, you do not have the flu, so negate flu, so that's negation Q. So in the current format, I have if not P, then not Q. We're not done yet because the directions say to write the negation. In other words, take the opposite meaning of if not P, then not Q. So I'm just going to simply mimic the pattern that I have in the space above here. Remember, our pattern is whatever's in the if portion, keep it the same. Up here, P stayed as P. So in this case, in my if portion is not P, so not P stays the same. When you negate a conditional, it becomes an up arrow for and every time. And whatever is in the then portion, I had a Q up here, negate it. So my Q became a not Q up here. If I want to negate a not Q, double negative makes it positive Q. So whenever you're negating an if-then sentence, keep the first part exactly the same. The if-then becomes an up arrow for and, and negate, change the opposite meaning of whatever is in the then portion of the sentence. So not P and Q would have the opposite meaning as the original sentence. Let's rewrite this out in words. Not P means you do not have the, a fever. You're negating P, so you do not have a fever. Up arrow for and. Regular Q was you do have the flu. And you do have the flu. So what has the opposite meaning of if you do not have a fever, you do not have the flu? Well, here it is right here. You do not have a fever and you do have the flu. 
De Morgan's laws give us equivalent statements. These are statements that if we were to create a truth table, they have the same truth values, the same answers in the same spots. So they hold the same exact meaning. There are two De Morgan's laws. This is named after a mathematician. De Morgan was his last name. The first rule says if you have a negation in front of a parenthesis and you have P and Q, this is equivalent to, I'm gonna do the three bars again, not P or not Q. The memory trick that I use is I almost feel like it's algebra-ish. I pretend like I'm distributing the negative sign to everything, including the arrow. So this becomes not P. When I negate the and, it flips it upside down so it becomes an or and not Q. The second rule, if I see again a negation in front of a parenthesis, P or Q is equivalent to, let's distribute the negative sign, so this will become not P. When I negate an or, again it flips the arrow upside down, so now it turns upward and becomes an and. Negate Q. So it becomes not P and not Q. For example, it says write a statement that is equivalent to, so no more negation of a conditional stuff like on the last slide. This is a totally different topic. Now just what has the same meaning, what is equivalent to the following? It is not true that Bart Simpson and Tony Soprano are cartoon characters. Step one, let's assign letters to represent each of the ideas. So I'm gonna let P represent that Bart Simpson is a cartoon character. I'll just write Bart is a cartoon. I'll just write Bart is a cartoon. The second idea would be that Tony Soprano is a cartoon character. I'll write Q equals, I'm just gonna abbreviate and write Tony is a cartoon. Step two, now we can bring in the symbols and the letters. Whenever you see that awkward sounding phrase, it is not true that, that tells us that we put a negation in front of a parenthesis for a change. Then everything that comes after that phrase, you put it inside the parentheses. So I have my squiggle tilde for negation parentheses. Bart Simpson was letter P and is the up arrow. Tony Soprano was the letter Q. So currently in math symbols, the phrase is negation parentheses P and Q. Whenever I see a negation in front of a parenthesis and the directions ask for what's equivalent to, I immediately think of De Morgan's laws. Since both of his rules, both of his laws have that weird negation in front of a parenthesis look to it. So when I look this up, this was rule number one. When I distribute that negative sign, this is the same as saying not P. When I negate the and, it becomes an or and not Q. So as soon as you see the words is equivalent to and you see the negation in front of a parenthesis, which is represented by it is not true that or it is false that, those are all clues to use one of De Morgan's laws to just distribute the negation in. So we get not P or not Q. Last step, let's rewrite this in words. Not P would be that Bart Simpson is not a cartoon character. So put Bart is not a cartoon. Down arrow for the word or. Not Q would be that Tony Soprano is not a cartoon. And I'll just write or Tony is not a cartoon. I'll just use their first names just to give myself a little bit more room. So this at the bottom that I'm circling is the final, final answer. So what are we saying? We're saying that the original sentence, which was, it is not true that Bart Simpson and Tony Soprano are cartoon characters, holds the same exact meaning as our answer, which is Bart is not a cartoon character, or Tony Soprano is not a cartoon character.